Okay, hallo Leute, ich sitze gerade mit Jill Janis von ähm, Huntress hier in der Zeche Bochum. Wir waren ein paar Tage zusammen unterwegs mit Dragon Force, Kiss and Dynamite und Huntress auf der europäischen Tour. Ja, und jetzt machen wir noch ein kleines Video-Interview. Jill, um, your first European tour is halfway over, so how was it so far? Well, it's been a whirlwind for us. Um, we're a fairly new band. We just started touring earlier this year in March. So with every tour, you learn more, um, but you never really expect things to go exactly right. You know, um, the jet lag and, and adjusting to being the only woman on a bus full of half-naked men. Um, it's cool. It's not bad, but um, with it comes a lot of discipline. So that's what we've been going through is just making sure we're not getting sick. <laughs> so um, Dragon Force, Huntress and Kiss and Dynamite are not really a match in musical style. How did that work out with the audience and everything? It's really interesting to see how that's unfolding. Um, when we first went on tour with Dragon Force, we were with them in the United States. So we did that earlier this year. Um, every opportunity that has come to us, we've been placed on these tours that are quite respectable, but we don't necessarily fit, you know? Um, however, for some reason, throughout, the fans still embrace it, because it's still uh, fantasy, you know? And that's with Dragon Force, is that they're very whimsical, and uh, there's a lot of fantasy in that, and I feel that it's the same way with Huntress, is that uh, demographic of theater that we bring as well. So it works really, really well, and um, Scandinavia for us was also a huge success, so we're having a great time in Germany, and it's nice um, having the fans come to the shows, and after seeing them for so long on the computer, I can finally see them face to face, so it's been really rewarding. So, any anecdotes you'd like to share from this tour so far? Anecdotes, meaning... Funny stuff oh, that happened. Oh, funny stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's always fun with uh, the Dragon Force boys, um, their British sense of humor and the pranks that they pull. Uh, it's, it's really been delightful just dancing with Fred in the dressing room after to 80s music and... Um, you know, just the various uh, things that we do, like breaking into someone's Facebook account and, and changing their profile pictures, like our sound engineer, JB. But, you know, it, there's really nothing else that I, that I can talk about because I'm the one that is the least fun on the tour. Um, I lead a very strange existence. So I, I will pull some pranks and, and have my fun, but really um, my job is to make sure that I can maintain the voice, that I stay healthy, and that I give the best possible performance I can give. Therefore, there really isn't a lot of time for me to joke around. Um, you know, it's a very, like I said, it's, it's a, I wake up in the morning and I prepare for a battle. That's all that I think about. So then after the show, I meet and greet fans, and, um, and then it's off to my coffin in the tour bus where I go on vocal rest and I, I won't speak until the next day. So um, before you formed The Hunters, um, you were working as a high society DJ actually, right, in Manhattan? Yeah, um, everything I've done prior to Huntress has been to fund Huntress. Mm -hmm. So I grew up you know, relatively poor, and my mother and father were divorced when I was a young girl, and um, I come from seven siblings. We grew up on a farm. So everything I've done, I've had to work very hard for, and um, that um, work ethic has carried on. Uh, so when I was in college, I, w I was actually given a scholarship to go to a conservatory in Manhattan to study voice. Yeah. And um, I just didn't have enough money, so I started working in nightlife because several of my gay boyfriends uh, that I was going to school with were like, you should really just come promote or work. And um, it seemed an easy way for me to make cash. Um, so that took off. And I was a little bit heartsick over it because I was still trying to put together my metal band, but it's like I kept making more money and more opportunities in nightlife. So eventually um, I had to decide to choose one path and I chose Huntress and since then only success has come to me but I think that's a, you know a, that was when the profound shift happened when I asked the tarot to reveal one song that would be an epic metal tune and that was Eight of Swords and when uh, that card revealed itself um, we all knew that we were going to get signed and we made the video uh, we, it was self-funded so all this 
ties in, you know, um, anything I've done before has, has gone to fund that. I mean, the money I was making as a DJ funded the video for Eight of Swords. Yeah. And that was what, what we sent out to the universe and put it on, on the internet. And, and we had a, a massive response. We had nine labels trying to sign us and okay. Napalm Records one. <laughs> nice. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. And uh, have fun with the second half of the tour. Yes. Thanks. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.